And uh, this goes on all over. Things are judged, you see, because they're good for you. And if we inquire carefully as to what this good for us is, uh, you, you know, you mustn't look into that. It's taboo. Uh, the whole culture would fall apart if we found out what it was, because what is the good that is good for you is always and necessarily something in the future. It never happens, and is never going to happen. All that these vitamins and carbohydrates and things can do for you is keep you in a state of reasonable survival, and uh, uh, in which you, you never catch up with anything. Because you see, time is strictly an illusion. There is no such thing as time, any more than there is such a concrete thing as the equator. The measurement of time, time is a measure of motion, just like lines of latitude and longitude are a measure of the geographic surface of the Earth. And nobody will ever tie up a roll roast with the equator. Uh, there is, however, such a thing as timing, which is quite different from time. Timing is skillful rhythm. And, but you cannot ever attain proper timing if you hurry, if you're in a hurry to get to the future. Because the future is never going to arrive. So if you hurry to get to the future, you always get a punishment for it. For example, instant coffee, <laughs> TV dinners, the sort of food they serve on airplanes, or, or beef that is cooked in electronic ovens where you push the switch and, you go, and a whole roast is done. It isn't, it's heated through, it's not roasted. And all these things are awful because they are the result of the illusion of time. That there is something that is good for us that we're going to get to. And so uh, this is the result of an educational system which is completely geared to literary and mathematical pursuits, which trains everybody to be clerks, sales, uh, insurance salesmen and bureaucrats. And only with great reluctance does education offer any kind of instruction in material competence, and then only for people who are considered too stupid uh, to be intellectuals, to go on to college. So the basic arts of life in our culture Farming, cooking, dressing, furnishing, lovemaking are utterly neglected. There is no sophisticated training widely available in any of these things for the average person. And so that, that's the reason why there is nothing on which to spend the time that we save and the money we earn, except trash. So, uh, fake cars, pasteboard houses, bread made of squishy styrofoam, vitamin enriched, and uh, all that sort of thing, you see, because of the illusion, uh, we've fallen for the illusion of time. So, only uh, uh, the, 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 what is absolutely necessary for a culture, that means a society of cultivated people, is the cultivation and devotion to the present, to the material world, rather than to the purely theoretical world. You see, maya in Sanskrit uh, does indicate in one sense the physical world, because uh, in the positive sense that the physical world is actually a marvelous work of art. But maya in another sense, in the sense in which it means measurement, refers to all the ways we have of numbering and naming and dividing up into categories the physical world. So time is maya. Latitude and longitude is maya. The future is maya. In the, the, the less uh, exciting sense of the illusion. So you see, because of this state of mind, we, we don't uh, think that play is important. We play in order to refresh ourselves to go back to work.
And that's not playing. Playing is uh, a real absorption in, a, in the delight of a dance, for example. You don't dance because it's good for you, you dance because you're happy. But you see, we have a very odd incapacity for happiness because we are happier when we expect good things to happen rather than when they're happening. And so we say of a thing that we consider bad, <coughs> it has no future. Well, nothing has a future. There isn't a future. <coughs> There's always a present, and one has to get this as a kind of a basic approach. So then, one can also, therefore, use the word play or game in a sense that is not trivial. We don't think, for example, that when we hear a performance of a Bach cantata, or better, a purely uh, non-symbolic thing, like a fugue, uh, we don't think that that's trivial. We don't think it's trivial to play the organ in church. Uh, we don't think that the plays of Shakespeare are trivial. They're plays. A play, you see, in the sense that I'm using it, is a musical thing. It is a dance. It is an expression of delight in the sense of Blake saying that <coughs> energy is eternal delight. And, uh, for example, the art of Islam, the arabesques, which aren't pictures of anything. They're just fantastically intricate, beautifully colorful designs. They are play. And according to this thesis, the universe is just like that. It is a very, very elaborate play system. And the fundamental elements of this play, the Chinese call the yang and the yin. Yang means uh, the positive and yin the negative. Yang refers to the south side of a mountain, which is in the sun, and yin to the north side, which is in the shade. Yang refers to the north bank of a river, which is in the sun, and yin to the south bank of a river, which is in the shade. Yang is symbolically or prototypically male. Yin is symbolically female. That's not to cast any reflections on women. Uh, but... Uh, so you might say this, the reason they're called male and female is that yang is aggressive and yin is yielding. Uh, yang is convex, yin is concave. Now, the secret about the opposites, which is as important as realizing that there is no such thing as time, the secret about the opposites is this, that they appear to be as different as different can be. We say of opposites, like black and white, that the, they are the poles apart. But in using that phrase, poles, you imply a connection between them. as there is a connection of the north to the south pole of the earth and as there is a connection between the north and south poles of the magnet. They are two ends of the same stick, two sides of the same coin, two opposite points on the same sphere. And that means that they go together. In Chinese, this is called arising mutually, as in the second chapter of Lao Tzu, where he says, when all the world knows beauty to be beautiful, there is already ugliness. When all the world knows goodness to be good, there is already evil. For to be and not to be arise mutually. <coughs>